Harry with all IQI warriors. So, um, for those who may not know me, uh, hi Aiman, my name is Ewan, I'm from Penang, uh, under Elite Plus team. So, uh, today my sharing will be uh, about how to make our next bucket of gold, hi Sal, how to make our next bucket of gold during this current crisis. Today, I'm going to share, what I'm going to share is how to take advantage of this current crisis and come out from this crisis uh, in, a, in, 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 vic in victory uh, by uh, earning ourselves a uh, next bucket of gold. Well, our strategy as an investor, okay, remember just now I said I earned my first bucket of gold during the 2008 subprime mortgage. That was also the time I actually got a lot of uh, below market value deals from property. The reason why I love to invest in property uh, versus uh, stock because property allow us to leverage. I'm sure all of us know, right? Allow us to leverage. So during crisis, in fact, we can get a lot of way below market value good deals where we can actually have a lot of no money deals and. Once the market recover, but where it will, definitely when we offload, when we started off, that is when we are going to gain our bucket of gold, right? So may I know who have actually made, who have also made their bucket of gold during the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis? Uh, can you put three if you are one of them? Because it will be very encouraging for the rest to know that Crisis is definitely one of the best time to make money. Not only about doom and gloom, but it's actually an opportunity for us to grab hold of it. And since we are actually uh, IQI warriors, we are already in this real estate line, who is better to know when the market is coming out and when the market is going down and which market is thriving and what property we should be going in, right? We are at the forefront of the real estate industry. We get the, the, the market trend changing uh, firsthand because we are in the industry. The reason why the reason why I, I uh, joined uh, as an agent is because I started as a property investor and I want to become a better property investor. That's why I decided to become an agent and it did help me really. Okay, Julie, Julie asked, may I ask if the owner wanted to sell, if this period not good then when uh when when the time owner could sell with good margin okay this one uh, i will share later okay i will share later when is the best time for us to sell there are signs for, to tell us that market is going to improve and market is going to pick okay i will share with you uh later uh, grace mm, yes thanks grace for the summary so any of you have also uh, uh, made your bucket of gold during the 2008 subprime mortgage can put a tree here so that we can um, encourage all our other uh, warriors, Akira warriors that crisis is indeed a time of opportunity. We have to change our metaphor when we look at crisis. We cannot just look at crisis as a time of panicky, a, a time of uh, 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 uncertainty. No, instead we should look at uh, crisis as a lifetime opportunity for us to make our next bucket of gold. Wow, Sean Lee, three, three, three. Wow, good, three, three, three. Okay, Sky Cop. Mm, okay. So uh, to answer what uh, earlier uh, uh, asked, someone asked me about when is a good time for uh, the buyer to uh, for the owner to sell, right? Actually, from the the past. Uh, I have witnessed the, the, the full cycle, right? You know why, when did I sell off most of my properties? I sold it off in 2013 and 2014. Do I know that time the market is going to pick and it's going to, to come down? I can say that I do not have a crystal ball. I, I didn't really um, get to know that it's going to tumble after 2014. But what I can feel is what the government is doing. The intervention that the government is is announcing, okay. You see, whenever a market is very down, you know, very down like now, 
the government definitely would have to come up with intervention to uh, uh, spice up the market. So this is where we said it's the buyer's market, it's good for us to buy because even the government agree that the market is, is half dead, so they need to intervene. So as a buyer, we always want to buy when it's at buyer's market, right? So currently, we can see like uh, our government has already started their intervention uh, uh, measures like what? Like uh, late, late last year, they have reduced OPR. They have reduced OPR. And even as recent as now, they have also further reduced OPR from... Uh, 2.5 to currently the OPR has been reduced to 2.25. So if you were to ask me, uh, is this going to stop here? No, because I have seen the history where our OPR has actually went as low as 2%. Okay, that was also during crisis time. So I foresee that within this year, most likely Bank Negara is going to cut the OPR again, okay, to probably historical low of uh, 2%. Okay. Okay, then apart from OPR, because uh, uh, a lot of our customers, uh, when we tell them OPR has been cut, uh, actually many of them, they don't really realize what is the, the, the true impact of OPR cut. Uh, so what has that got to do with me? Cheaper, but cheaper by how much? So if let's say we can draw a, uh, draw a chart and show to them that based on your previous uh, 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 well, monthly installment when the OPR was at 2.5 how much do you have to pay and then now uh, once your uh, OPR has been reduced how much saving are you going to gain from this new OPR rate when you show them this then it will actually register in their mind that hey, actually OPR reduction is very good for them to start to go and buy good properties and get mortgage loan from the bank yeah Okay, so uh, don't just tell them that uh, OPR has been reduced, so it's very good. Maybe can even do the calculation and, and send it to them and let them see okay, uh, how different OPR is going to, to affect uh, their, their monthly installment amount. How much saving are they going to get from the OPR reduction? Okay, so look forward. If let's say Bank Negara continue to reduce OPR, it's going to be a good sign that our, our property market is going to be slowly get stimulated. But OPR alone is not going to be sufficient. Okay, what I foresee is that uh, I have seen historically during a crisis, Bank Negara would also reduce their SRR. SRR, as our previous warrior has uh, shared with us, uh, stands from st for statute. Statutory uh, reserve requirement, which means in layman term, uh, today, uh, let's say CMB, they are supposed to have two million before they can lend out uh, ten million. But then today, with the reduction, probably they only need to maintain uh, one million uh, reserve in order to lend out uh, ten million. This is in layman term, which means that the bank now would have more money to lend out to 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 the mass market. So when the bank has more money to lend out to the mass market, they will be more relaxed in their loan approval, right? Agree? They will be more relaxed to to. So you you can foresee that the loan reject rate will come down, would actually come down. Okay. So I foresee that OPR will be further reduced to probably about two point zero, uh, within this to next year, and SRR to be further reduced. SRR to be further reduced from two percent currently to as low as 1% in 2021. Okay, then another final thing, but uh, final measures, which I think is going to uh, help to create and stimulate the housing market like how it did in during the subprime mortgage is the RPGT. We know that currently our RPGT is still pretty high. First three years, uh, 30%, no. And fourth year, it's like uh, 20%, fifth year, 15 And thereafter, still have 5%. This is definitely not going to help to stir up our housing market. Okay, I've seen last time uh, during the subprime mortgage crisis, what happened is that uh, that was during Abdullah Badawi. That was during Abdullah Badawi term. He actually, what he did... Uh, to, to spice up the market, he actually totally abolished AFRIGT for the whole year of 2008 and 2009. Okay, and once this uh, RPGT has been totally abolished, in fact, the next six months.
enhancements, we can see the uh, uh, activities for, for housing transactions start to gain traction and eventually that's uh, how our housing market got propelled up to to, 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 the, to, the, to the market peak when it comes to 2014. So this time, if based on his, historical uh, sequences, uh, I would expect that our government, uh, currently under Muidin, right, I would expect that he would actually do the same if he want to lift our property market out from the current doldrum. Okay, most likely uh, uh, during this uh, budget they are going to announce to either abolish uh, the RPGT totally or probably reduce it to 5%. Okay, so if this really materialize, uh, just now someone asked you when is the best time for the, for the owner to sell, right? have to ask your owner to sell when there is no RPGT, when the market start to gain heat, okay? Usually it will take about six months for the for the momentum to kick in. And if based on historical uh, data, they will not just abolish for one year, probably two years. Because who agree that the current uh, uh, pandemic or the current crisis is actually uh, worse than the 2008 uh, crisis? If those of you who agree, maybe you can put a uh, four, four. If you agree that the current crisis we are looking at is going to do more damages than in 2008 uh, subprime mortgage, uh, maybe you can help me to put four, four, so that I know that you all understand what I've been sharing. Four. Okay. For myself personally, I, I do think that this current uh, crisis, the damage that is going to, to to do on our economy, uh, the magnitude is going to be bigger compared to 2008 uh, mortgage crisis. Uh, hence, the bold uh, measures that has been announced and taken by the uh, our government so far. Yeah, what is it for? Yeah. So if this time the crisis, the magnitude is going to be bigger. Don't you think that um, our government is going to abolish RPGT even longer? Or minimum at least two years like what they have did way back in 2008 crisis. So if you are a, a, a property owner or, or, or investors, the best time is for you to sell is once the RPGT abolishment kick in. Not the first six months, huh? probably the second six months. Uh, the third six months, that is when the momentum really get into it and the demand will start to come out. Then you will be able to command uh, 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 a better uh, price for your property. Definitely not now. In fact, this morning I also received call from an owner. She wants to sell off her condo. I tell her, she asked me whether is there a buyer. I tell her very frankly, I said, there will always be a buyer provided what is your asking price. Currently, it's buyer's market, so if you are selling during buyer's market, definitely you have to sell it below market value. Even the developers are doing that. So I said, if you have the holding power, best don't sell it during the buyer's market. Okay, we always want to buy during buyer's market, but we sell during the seller's market. Okay, so what I expect is that like what they have done uh, during the 2008 uh, subprime mortgage crisis, once they abolished the RPGT, that was the time I was in the market, right? I witnessed uh, a swift transformation from very pessimistic and all that to everyone uh, wanting to buy and have have a bite of the of the of the of the property and of the gain and all that. So, um, so I would say that um, the stimulus measures that we should anticipate for, from the government to tell whether it, uh, our housing market is going to be stirred up is first further OPR reduction from Bank Negara, further SRR reduction and definitely RPGD abolishment or massive reduction. If these three measures is being implemented, you can be 101% sure that our housing market is going to reverse and from from the market downturn to actually go up uh, to the bull and eventually the market will repeat itself again. So, uh, in fact, now I do have many of my buyers uh, 
they are feeling very very pessimistic and tell me that things are very uncertain so i can't blame them because they have not been through a, a cycle before like for myself i've been through 97 cycle uh, a crisis 2003 and and i just let it pass by without taking any action because of fear too but when it comes to 2008, I decided that, hey, we don't have many 10 years. Uh, so I decided to take uh, a, a positive action during 2008, and I got rewarded handsomely. And this time, in fact, to me, is um, even more prepared than last time. And I expect that this time, the bucket of gold that I'm going to earn will be way bigger than the first bucket of gold that I earned previously. So I do hope that... Uh, all of us at QRWs, we have to know that uh, this current crisis, be it the magnitude, is going to be bigger or, 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 and all that, is going to come to a pass because this is how economy works. Economy works in cycles. Forever going up and it won't be forever coming down. So we have to accept that. So once we come to turn with that, when crisis hit, we are always prepared. And we're always looking out for opportunity instead of uh, joining the uh, doom and gloom party. Okay, so same for our property market. Once our government uh, uh, introduced uh, the stimulus measures that I mentioned earlier, our housing market is going to rebound and that's when we actually uh, take in our profit. Okay, but what about those? Uh, I know that there are some who die die just don't want to take action because they are just very fearful and they refuse to learn how to invest so they said okay once the crisis is over I mean uh, they are okay in fact I have got a bad news to share with you all even if eventually this crisis is going to recover where it will it doesn't mean that you all have actually escaped from this crisis totally in fact if you if you do study economy if you do study history after every crisis in fact, every one of us would be penalized with one thing, which is inflation. You know that uh, during each crisis, government have to pump in a lot of money, right? Stimulus package in order to build up our economy. So all this money, eventually, if the supply of money is getting way uh, bigger and bigger and more and more in, in the market, it means that the value of our, our money, the purchasing power of our money is going to be reduced. This is what, even if the money that you save, you save untouched and all that, even if you don't spend it, it's going to be to be wasted away by what? By inflation. So I always tell my, uh, like even my daughter, she's quite young, still young, 15 years old. I told her that uh, gone are the days where we, you, we can just focus on saving and saving, you know, work and save current era, we definitely have to learn how to invest, okay? Definitely invest in uh, investment uh, that is safe and one of the best investment that can hedge against inflation. Guess what is that? Anyone can guess what is the best asset we can invest in in order to hedge inflation? If you can guess, we can, can write it down. What do you think is the best investment for yourself uh, to invest in in order to hedge the inflation? For me, for me, I would think that uh, good real estate is one of the best assets we can actually learn to invest in to hedge the inflation. So that uh, come what may the crisis or what we know that we are preserving our purchasing power. Yeah, KG Teo said property, same as, as myself. So we are preserving our purchasing power, our hard-earned money. Zalina also said property. Good. Kenny also said property. So this current crisis, in fact, is a very good uh, opportunity for us to go out there and invest in good undervalued property. And the beauty of property investment, like what I said earlier, we can even use other people's money, which is a bank's money, to own it. Okay, Alan Yo property, Samantha, June property, good, CJ, go, go, okay, property. Okay, so um, so now that we know that um, there is no longer an option for us to, to learn to invest, to make our our money work harder for us, we definitely have to take this, this current crisis is actually a 
very opportune time for us to go and learn how to invest in property. Because usually we are only fearful when we don't know what we are doing. Am I right? Just like uh, if you are in a dark place and in front of you there is a door. But you don't know what, when you open up, you don't know what, what is you are going to get into. I mean, what is behind the door? Definitely, you are, you are, you are, you'll, be, you'll be very fearful to open up the door, right? Because you don't know what it is. It is after you open up the door. What is behind the door? You are very, very fearful. So today, when it comes to property investment, it's the same. If, let's say, today you do not uh, uh, invest to, to learn about how to invest in property, and we just ask you to go and invest in property, you will not. You will also be fearful because you wouldn't know which are the path you should be charging to, just like the horses. Huh? You don't know which are the path you should be charging to to get to the right finishing line. Where you open up the door, you will be greeted by a bucket of gold. Right? So, today, uh, after my, my this humble sharing, I hope that all our IQI warriors, if you have not started investing in property, Please do so. Because of our career as a property consultant, we already have an extra edge compared to others because we know the market well. Okay, So why don't we capitalize on our edge to also become a better property investors and to profit from this crisis? And at the same time, we can also better uh, advise our clients how to become a better property investors and i'm sure if if once clients can see value in in our advice they will definitely stick with us do you all agree right so in fact uh, there is actually a, a report to say that after this current crisis our malaysia inflation if forecasted the inflation is going to jump to about 6.1 Currently, it's about two point something. Okay, that is the the, the national figures. Uh, our current crisis is about two point two point something. But they forecast that next year, after this crisis is over, we hope so, our inflation uh, is going to jump up to about six point one. So imagine if today you, we don't learn how to invest in property, which is one of the best uh, uh, inflation hedge uh, investment. And we just let our money slip in the fixed deposit or savings. It will still depreciate away. It will still be, uh, uh, eat away the, the purchasing power by inflation. So all these are our hard-earned money. Why should we let inflation eat away? Right? We should be protecting our hard-earned money and make sure our hard-earned money works harder for us. Okay? So uh, I think this is uh, my sharing for today. But uh, before I end my sharing, I'd like to share with everyone a quote by Steve Jobs that I heard in one of his, uh, uh, way back in uh, 2005, okay? He actually uh, quoted this. He said that we have to believe that the dots will somehow connect in our future. We have to believe that somehow the dots will connect in our future. So what are the dots that we are talking uh, about now? The dots that we are talking about now are all the information and knowledge that I've shared with you all earlier on how our property, property market is going to be heading to in the next 6, 12, 18 and 24 months. So believe that all this thought is going to connect together and will pave uh, our future, if we follow this thought, it will definitely bring us to a finishing line where when we open up the door, what we will be, greet, what we will be greeted by is a bucket of gold, right? So uh, with this, I end my sharing today and I hope that uh, uh, you all get to benefit uh, from my sharing today and start to invest in property if you have not done so. Okay. okay, that's all uh, for my sharing today. Thank you for uh, joining uh, in my sharing. Thank you. Okay, and have a good day, good Sunday. Bye-bye.